What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. Paul here and I'm talking tackle bags today. I'm going to do a full breakdown and review on this bag right here, the Ego uh, Tackle Backpack in their own proprietary Cryptek. We're gonna go through all of this. I'm also gonna talk about how I'm planning on using this bag, where it kind of fits in like my hierarchy of bags that are out there. Um, I'll reference a couple of other videos that people have done on bags like this one, and actually this one too, uh, and give you some background. We'll also talk retail uh, and a couple of other things. Before I get into all of that, before we get into the breakdown, Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are enjoying you know, this video, if you like tackle reviews, unboxings, uh, if you like fun fishing videos, if you like live podcasts every single Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, this is an awesome channel for you. So please hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you can see when we post more content. And again, thank you very much. Without further ado, I wanna get into this tackle bag. This is the Ego Tackle Backpack. They also make a duffel bag version, but I opted for the backpack. Um, this retails for 100 and I think 30 bucks, somewhere in there. Definitely more on the expensive side. Let me go through the features first, and then we'll talk about how you're gonna use it, where you might use it, why you might go with something different, and then again, where this kind of fits in like the hierarchy. Is this like my number one bag that I've ever seen? Is this like maybe somewhere near the top, but maybe not the best one? We'll find out in a second. So what are you getting for this bag? You are getting, um, a really sturdy bag. This is made of 1000 denier nylon, very heavy duty. One of the more heavy duty fabrics that you're gonna see on, on some other tackle bags. Now on the underside of that 1000 denier is PVC backing. That makes this fairly water resistant. It's not a waterproof bag. Um, I don't think I would actually want one. I do have a few waterproof bags and they tend to be a little on the bulky side, inflexible, and just in general, probably not my preference. I like to minimize my use of waterproof bags as much as possible. But this is gonna be water resistant, which is great. Um, it also has like a very sturdy, almost a frame, like, you can kind of hear actually when you like knock on the side of this, like these side panels are very rigid. Not sure what's inside of there, but the side panels are very rigid. Um, and that helps this bag stand upright when you set it down, not just being full. When it's empty and you set it down, it is standing upright just like you see it right here, which I think is fantastic. It's also got, get it down on the bottom here, uh, a rubber coated bottom with a pretty heavy duty bottom portion and frame on the bottom. This is gonna mean when you set your tackle back down in the muck in the mud, you can rest assured that for the most part, nothing's getting through there. It's also going to stand the test of time. If I spend over a hundred bucks on a tackle bag, I wanna make sure that it's gonna be durable. I do feel like you're getting a very durable bag for your money, which is probably a huge portion of where that cost comes in. Uh, it's got a couple of really cool features. This is a tactical style bag, and they make that pretty clear in all the marketing and advertising, even just the look of the bag. The like aggressive red with the black and gray Cryptek camo, which is actually pretty cool. I'll hold it up for you. So that's their crypto uh, pattern, pretty cool. I know you've probably seen it in a couple different places. Um, pretty sweet, very aggressive, fits in with a tactical you know, deal here and looks pretty cool, I think overall. You're also gonna notice along with that tactical bag, you're getting these laser cut molly strips here. So these molly strips are basically just places for you to um, attach other things, other gear. For example, I have my Rapala pliers on here. You can see they just slide on and off, pretty awesome. Uh, and actually a really great spot for them. The other thing that I love about this bag is the fact that these straps are, they're very comfortable, they're very heavy duty. A lot more comfortable and heavy duty, much, much more like a high quality backpack strap than some of the other backpacks that you see out there. It's also got these really soft, like molded, uh, or not molded, these really soft like pads on the back. Um, here, I'll kind of show you. So you can see like just super soft, there's air is gonna move through, through there really well. These are gonna be really comfortable. And there's also this sort of like place for air to move as you're, get, as you're walking. So if you're going on a long walk and you get a little sweaty, this is gonna help you out quite a bit, stay comfortable, uh, which is kind of the goal. And the other thing is this is like a six pound pack, I think when it's, when it's empty. So this is probably a 25, 30 pound pack if you're really loading it down. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, it's not light. So with a big bag that's gonna carry a lot of stuff, you wanna make sure that you stay comfortable. It's got these cool rubber loops right here for you know zingers and things like that. So whether you're attaching carabiners with your key, tools you know whatever um, you know I suppose you could very easily just plop these right in there like so and I mean that's gonna be an awesome place for you to keep your stuff it does have the chest strap which I like it doesn't have a hip strap so a strap that would like you know clip like a belt I actually love that I think those are overrated they don't really help that much I'm not rock climbing or anything I'm not gonna be climbing any mountains I think that 
you know, having the heavy duty attachments as they are is, is exactly what I want. The chest is nice because when you do have a heavy load, it keeps the, back, the pack from sliding apart as much as you like. Um, but I think that's the way to go. So my other favorite features are, these are their like G clips. So instead of like a buckle, like there are, there are one or two, there are two buckles on this pack. One of them is here uh, and they are plastic. I mean, they're high quality, they're gonna be fine, but they are plastic. And plastic, as you know, tends to not last as long. This is again, fitting in with the whole model of like a tactical backpack. These are a very tactical option. They're quick, they're clean. The nice thing is, is though they will last a very long time. These are kind of a high durability, like pretty thick metal, which I think is awesome, uh, you know, Probably not the most convenient, but definitely not inconvenient, and they will last you a long time. They also have two places for patches, one of which is included and sewn on. So that is a sewn in American flag. You know we dig the American flag here on the Barely Fishing channel, so I like that, love to see it, matches the whole deal here. And then you've got this open spot with some Velcro here. I'll kind of lift it up to show you again. Check that out. Uh, very cool. You can put your own patch there if you like. That's kind of a, again, a very tactical thing that's on a lot of tactical style, you know, military style backpacks. But the cool thing about this one is with that hook and this is like the, the loop part of the hook and loop, the Velcro. Um, I actually put lures on here, like small, I actually think I have one right here. If you have small lures, let's say you pull off like this little MEPS right here that guy, um, it's not gonna work for anything gigantic, but let's say you've got a wet lure that you don't want to put back in your tackle box. Just hang it right there. It's not going anywhere. It's stuck there. That is awesome. I actually see this a lot on fly fishing gear. I use it all the time. I actually have these on the inside of some of my smaller kayaks. Again, you have a little jerk bait that you use. You don't want to throw it back in your, uh, in your tackle box. You want to let it dry off or it's got some muck on it or you just want to grab it again later. Stick it right on there. Pretty cool. So let's get down to the pockets. On the exterior, you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five pockets. Now, there are two on the sides. Um, oh, one other thing before we get to the pockets. These zipper poles have like a rubber, I'll pull this up close for you again. They have like a rubber like little loop on them. These are fantastic poles. These are not the most highest quality zippers that you can possibly get, but they are pretty high quality. And I love these little poles. Again, they're not gonna break, they're not gonna fall off. And they make things pretty easy. Kind of a nice little feature. I'm using these mostly for plastics, these side bottom pouches. They fit most packs horizontally. They'll fit a lot of vertical tall clamshells, which is great. If you stack them horizontally, you can actually get like almost two layers of plastics in here. You can comfortably fit anywhere from five to 12 bags, somewhere in that neighborhood. Again, depending on the size of the plastic and that whole thing, five to 12 on either side. Basically one of these Monster Bass bags, perfectly full, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 uh, bags of plastics. They're gonna fit pretty comfortably, split between these two side pouches. Now you can put tools and other stuff in there. I mean, there's a lot that you could do, but I'm probably gonna use those primarily for my plastics. Then you've got two identical pack, or two identical, two identical um, pouches on either side on top of those. Now those, they have the G hook, or the G hooks on them, so you're gonna pull them off. And inside there, I'm gonna keep things mostly line and maybe some weights, right? So this is a perfect kind of size uh, for those types of things. So once I got two things of line, stick them right in there, no problem. And then I've got uh, one smaller, like leader material that I plopped on top. And then you can use that, again, that G-clip and secure it, strap it down, whatever. In the front, got a larger pocket with two of those little uh, straps. I'm keeping in mind some tools. So I've got a, you know, standard size um, scale. I've got, I don't know why I have two of these, but I have two um, hemostats, this is for unhooking smaller fish, do a lot of pan fishing, those are great for that. Uh, and then I've got, these actually are a really awesome set of uh, line cutters, as well as um, you can do some split ring and some other things, but these are super cheap. Got that on the zinger, you could throw that pretty much anywhere on this pack, but I've got it in here. Um, there also is, here I'll try and show you. There are, it's really probably not gonna show up well on camera. There's like some pockets sewn onto the inside. One of them, Let's see here. One of them is, that's not gonna show up really well. But one of them fits your cell phone very well. I will demonstrate. That's an iPhone 12 with a case, fits in there nice and snug. You can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see that. Nice and snug iPhone 12. On the other side, there's two little stretchy pockets, loose change pocket knife, you know, whatever. Floats your boat can go in there. Um, to be honest, they're probably not gonna use them. 
One of the things that I like about this pack is that it's not too prescriptive on you know, where you're gonna put things. Like there's no spot that says, this is the only place where you're gonna put and only put pliers. You can put them anywhere. Uh, this is the only place that you're gonna keep line. Nothing else will fit in here. It's pretty uh, modular and open, which I really like. There's one more pocket on top. This is a great pocket. So you can put like some of your favorite plastics and jigs <laughs> if you wanted to in there. That's what I've got in here right now. This is a great place to keep wallet keys, that sort of thing. Uh, not waterproof, water resistant. I'm probably recommending to keep like things that can't get wet in here. I think it's gonna be a little more waterproof than up here, but this is more convenient. So on a nice day, that's probably where I'm keeping my stuff. I will probably keep like power bars, you know, maybe snacks or whatever. That's probably what's gonna go on top more often or like I have in there right now, my go-to uh, jigs and things like that for the day. Pack it back up nice. Don't step on these jigs. <sighs> Don't wanna step on those. Get them back in there. So, I mean, a decent sized pocket, maybe half, maybe an inch, inch and a half tall. So those are all your pockets. I'm gonna hit the bottom here first. Well, I'm gonna hit the top here first and I'll work my way down for the main pocket. Now the main event here, actually the reason I went with this bag more than the other ones is the size of the top opening. This top lid has the probably the biggest or second biggest top opening of a lot of other bags. You'll see um, a lot of companies make a bag and it kind of tapers up. That's what's helping it stand upright is like it's almost pyramid shaped. The problem with the pyramid shape is you can't fit a full size Plano into that opening. This is the biggest, well probably the second biggest opening of any bag. Water bottle here on top, big one. That's another kind of miss on this one. There is no water bottle pouch, but it fits in there pretty comfortably. I have in here right now, uh, I think three Plano 3700 size boxes fit vertically. You could probably squeeze four in there, but right now, and for most of my fishing, I have my Plano terminal box. I, well, I'll take these out for you. I have my Plano terminal box where I keep like all my hooks and things that I might need. And then I've got basically two day boxes. So here's like a, bo a Busby box that's just like full of baits that I know or think of that I'm gonna use for that day. So there's that. And then there's just another one. So you get three easily probably fit four if you had to, but what I'm more often than not gonna do is throw in another one of these Monster Bass bags. So whatever, you know, I, I feel like this is a great way to not have to stay organized, or if you wanna pull a bunch of plastics, you know, keep your steady eddies here on the side, the ones you know you use all the time, and then what do I think I'm gonna need for the day? Um, plop these in there too. I think that's a great way to organize. That's how I do it. But moral of the story is these are tall enough, wide enough to fit at least three, maybe four, um, Plano edges uh, vertically. And then if you're putting three in there, you can squeeze in one of these type of bags or some more plastics or a sweatshirt or whatever. And there's still room on top for like a big old Yeti sized water bottle, um, snacks, lunch, more gear, sweatshirt, jacket, rain jacket, you know, whatever, which is kind of awesome. That is actually my favorite part about this bag. Now, the way that it's intended to be designed, this, we're gonna work our way down to the front here. The intention is really to have this plop down and then there's this divider that actually goes it, it just sort of fits like in the top right here um but it, it is velcro and this by the way this velcro is very heavy duty and this i think the plastic is actually again pretty heavy duty it's gonna be like 30 seconds maybe a minute to like get this from the velcro spot out which i think is great so if you decide that you want to shove this back in here what they're going to provide for you that also comes with this bag is four of these that slide right in here which is really cool. And they've got a buckle, just like a lot of these other companies do. There's your second buckle that will go right in there and hold them in place. Maybe you wanna leave this open, you know, mess around with stuff or whatever, or, or walk with it open, I don't know, and, and just keep all your tackles safe. You could do it this way, throw this on top. You've got uh, four 3,600 size trays that can fit in here. It comes with four, I don't know where the other one is, but you have four trays in here. And then there's this little divider to keep everything, you know, like jacket, lunch, whatever, up here on top. It's a great way to use this bag, but me personally, the way I fish, I'm, you know, I'm a kayak angler. I have my 3700s all full and ready to go. So I'm probably just gonna fill two or three of them up, grab them and rock. So I have mine, I have this stowed away here at the bottom so that I don't lose it. But again, still fits a ton. That is a great way to do it. It's sort of like whatever works for you. Now, inside here, you'll notice I have some other stuff. So I'll kind of pick this up. You can see there's like a little mesh pouch here in the front. I've got like a knife stringer. Um, I've got my uh, uh, wacky tool, extra hooks, steel leaders. I got a pocket knife, some other stuff. Um, and that all fits right in there, comfy cozy, which is 
pretty clutch. So overall, what are my impressions and thoughts on this bag after having it, after loading it up? Um, very heavy duty. That is absolutely worth the price of admission. Big open top, worth the price of admission. Love that open top. Very sturdy, like total construction. Like right now this is empty and it's almost like it's its own like cube. It's not falling over. It's got the heavy duty bottom. Um, I do like the Molly strips on here. It looks cool. I mean, not that I care that much, but it does look cool, which is a plus. Um, it has some innovative features. I like that, you know, a lot of stuff is metal. You know, the, the backpack strap, the straps and the back pads are like, Super comfy, I do a lot of walking to my spots. I do a lot of put my bag down, rig something up, check a spot, not no fish there or caught two fish there, wanna to go to the next one and then walk maybe a quarter mile to my next spot. So this is a great bag for me. Now what are some of the drawbacks to this bag? One, they should have probably made these pockets on the sides a little bit wider. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't. You know, it, you could probably, even just with a half an inch on both of these, fit a ton more stuff into this bag and keep things out of your main compartment. If I designed this bag, assuming I could keep the price point reasonable, I would probably have made all four of these pockets a little bit, well, five of these pockets a little bit bigger and deeper. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is as much as I like this, like Molly, I would have rather has seen um, like a strip here, two strips here, two strips here, um, and then like more strips in other places because realistically, if I hang something here, unless it's like a really small object, like I think the, I think the pliers are like a perfect example of like what can work really well here. Like unless I'm sliding something like this into here, it's gonna be dragging on the ground. I'm a big like zinger guy. So if I put a lot of stuff that's zinger material onto here, a lot of it's probably gonna be dangling and just like smashing into things and getting smashed in the ground, which I don't think is useful. Now I did have one idea on how to expand the capability of this while utilizing the Molly and I'll show that to you right now. Well, if you haven't seen this, is the Yeti, I don't remember if it's called the Sidekick or I can't remember, but it's like their waterproof pouch, uh, Velcro, magnetic liner, uh, but this is like submersible. I mean, this is like waterproof, waterproof. Now it has these like Velcro uh, attachment points to attach the outside of a Yeti cooler. I use these all the time. Uh, I use it all the time inside my boat when I'm out on long trips. Um, it's a great way to like maintain waterproof storage in any place. So like, let's say you wanted to free up this whole pocket. Heck, all one, two, three, four of these pockets, right? Um, you actually can Velcro it right to this Molly loop, which, which is kind of the whole point. It's supposed to be like a modular flexible. So I can like thread this through one of these, thread through the other side. Look, there you go, it's attached, it's not going anywhere. You can actually attach the bottom too if you wanted to. The other thing is there's a little handle on this. You could just clip it right on there with like a tiny little, um, a little carabiner, like a $1 carabiner. Uh, but then all of a sudden like you've got ways to attach things. That is one great thing about the Molly. Um, the back, the back, the drawback is, is you, you probably paid more for it. And there are probably better alternatives. Again, just like bigger pockets and maybe a couple of loops. Probably could have taken the place of that. Other than that, I mean, this thing is rock solid and I am a huge fan. I think there is um, there is a bigger pack out there and some folks have done some videos, not only on this bag. So Mr. Bass actually did a video on this pack and did a great job doing the walkthrough. Um, I think his are on loan, so you know I wanted to make sure that you got a really good view of how I'm planning on using this pack, but he did an awesome video, so go check out his out, run it up against mine, I would highly recommend that. Someone also, who was it that, oh yeah, Fishing with Gramps did a video uh, on the mock, I think it's called the hatch pack. It is, honestly, it's a bigger version of this pack and they retail for like the same price. It's like black and neon green. It is very comparable to this pack. It's one of the few that has the big open mouth, but it has a bigger pocket on the lid. It is a little bit deeper, so you can fit four Planos plus a bag of plastics pretty easily. Um, and I think he slid one on the side, which I don't know if you could do actually. Can I put a, I should try and see if that would work see if there's room in there for that. So if I had one of these in here, so he like put one here on the side, which I um, mean, you know, it would be, it's, yeah, it does fit. Let's see how many we can get in there. We'll put this in there, get this in there. And then we'll try and put one more in there. No, oh, not bad. So. Four Plano edges plus one on the side. Fits actually pretty snug. So I guess the main compartment's probably the same size as that mock bag. Um, but the side pockets are definitely a little bit bigger and the top hatch portion is definitely bigger. But they both have the open mouth. Um, and that one has a lot more kind of like plastic stuff and things that probably, they don't look like they're as heavy duty, 
but both packs look awesome. I would probably put this as a 1A. Like if you're comfortable with not needing all of the bigger extras and like the more plush and you want like the more rugged bag, this may be the more rugged bag, but that one probably has a few more of the extras and a little more space. That's, I mean, you may even be just differentiating between looks at that point um, because these straps are legit. I really like this bag. This was the one for me. I wanted one that was a little more plain Jane in terms of like amenities and really get just one of the big open space. I wanted to know the pack was gonna last. So that's why I went this route. Those are my overall impressions of this bag. Um, is it a good boat bag? Uh, you know, well, let's just say what, what, what uses are this gonna be, is this gonna be good for? This is gonna serve a pond angler very well. This is gonna, this is gonna serve any bank angler, you know, especially someone who's like walking the river very, very well. Um, this will serve someone pretty well who's fishing boats. It will sort of serve someone well who's in a kayak. I'm not sure. I'm not going to use this for kayak fishing. I'm not gonna be transporting anything to and from using this. This is exclusively for me gonna be a, a pond fishing, maybe a trip if I'm going on, like I am going on a trip uh, this upcoming week with Monster Bass team. This will be coming with me um, because I can take it onto a boat. It's rel pretty convenient, but I think there are better boat bags and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. So we talked about we talked about how many boxes you can fit in here. Four uh, 3700s plus one 3600, which, which is good um, and probably enough for most people. But if you have a bag like like this, like the duffel style, I could probably fit like, I don't know, eight, maybe, maybe more all the way across vertically. And that's why I like them. I like them vertical because you can kind of like look through them like a, a file cabinet and find what you need. Um, plus other stuff. And these 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 pouches are way bigger. I mean like way bigger. I can fit a 3600 like vertically in all of these. And then it's got lid flaps. It's, it's still heavy duty, but it also has like a totally molded bottom. So like a bag like this, this by the way is the Cabela's like advanced angler pack. This is not the Magnum. Jeff has the Magnum, which I, is bigger than this one even. I think this is one size below that. This is not quite as heavy duty material, but it's very heavy duty material. Is it waterproof? Absolutely not, but neither is the other one. Although the Ego bag is probably more waterproof. But all in all, this is probably what I want for a boat bag. This is what I have actually now for a boat bag. I, trans I transfer all my gear to and from my kayak 50% of the time, um, but I can leave this in my truck with almost all of my Planos in here, plus some other stuff, plus plastics. Um, and and with with one hand pretty easily like the transfers one time that's why that works the, the walk from the boat you know down to your to your truck and back like it, it's a one-time carry versus you know for me i'm probably not gonna be able to carry enough for like a whole day on a boat you know with the backpack so you know for a boat angler i don't really know if it's big enough if you're a co-angler and maybe you don't have a ton of space on the boat then yeah maybe this is you know a pretty good option for you Probably, um, but I'm still probably gonna opt for like the duffel style, as long as it's rectangular and you know, and actually does hold more gear. Um, so for everything except for maybe boat angling and kayak angling, everything else, anything from shore, this is gonna serve you unbelievably well. I'm so pumped to have it. So that is how I plan on using this bag. That's my overall impressions of this bag. Um, Leave your comments down below. Let me know uh, what other bags we should have looked at, once, which ones we didn't talk about, what could give this one a run for its money, and let us know what you think. Is this one worth the, the price, right? Is it worth the cost of mission? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. And again, if you enjoy this content, if you like reviews, unboxings, uh, fun fishing videos, if you like live podcasts at Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, please hit the uh, subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you can see when we post the next video, and we will catch you out on the water.